gave me a chance. He didn't it's see it, but the standing ovation they gave me the first time was even better than that one. You know, I'm a lot better when I'm not on stage. <laughs> uh, I gotta ask you a question. I applause. How many of you supported the government shutdown two years ago?
sign legislation repealing every word of that ban. You have to have some of the conversations you can't actually say if I'm elected. The, the next president will hopefully. Because there's a I, I, I certainly hope that. <laughs> I want to raise with you one other issue, and then we're going to go, and I want to remind people to get in line for questions. There's been a, an uproar over Planned Parenthood over the last 48 hours. Shut down! What is the... By the way, it's clear that we should not have alcohol for lunch. <laughs> so let's... Uh, what do we do? What is the right... Philosophy and what is the right strategy for dealing with Planned Parenthood? Well, let me say the video that surfaced in the past week of a Planned Parenthood leader describing, with no empathy, no compassion, no emotion, selling body parts of unborn children was gruesome and disgusting. And every American should watch that video and simply say, are those my bounds? Now, what should we do? Number one, on tape, it appears a senior Planned Parenthood official is admitting to multiple federal felonies and to multiple felonies at the state and local level. The U.S. Department of Justice, if it were not simply a partisan arm of the DNC, should open an investigation and prosecute Planned Parenthood. Prosecutors, attorneys general, and DAs should investigate the Planned Parenthood affiliates in their jurisdictions, and Congress should hold hearings, and we should cut off every penny of taxpayer money. Religious Liberty 
rally, including Dick and Betty Oathguard, a wonderful couple who were persecuted for following their Christian beliefs that marriage is the union of one man and one woman. And I will tell you what my prayer is. In the face of this disgraceful, lawless decision from the court, that it will spark an awakening, that it will awaken the body of Christ and lift us up to rise up for the 54 million evangelicals who are saying to say, we will take this country back to our Amnesty on common 
core of religious liberty on marriage. I'm going to endeavor to tell the truth about my beliefs, my record and their records, and have any election be on substance, but not on personal vitriol and attacks. When he says candidates, he means leaders. Just <laughs> Uh, in the back, we're going to go with microphone three. I have a question for you about Medicare and some current happenings with MedPAC. Okay. Um, currently, MedPAC is working on recommendations to Congress, excuse me, to Congress regarding site and control payments in healthcare, specifically between inpatient rehab facilities and skilled nursing facilities. This will mean that individuals with brain injury, stroke, and spinal cord will not receive the appropriate evidence-based rehab to reach their full potential to become a productive member of society again. How do you plan, if you elect a president, to ensure that individuals receive appropriate health care that is based on evidence and not business decisions? Well, thank you for that question. Um, I, I will say I don't know the specific policy recommendations that, that are referenced in the report you brought up. So, so let me speak more generally on how to approach this issue because without reviewing the report you referenced, I don't want to give an opinion on it without having read it. Um, what I will say is two, twofold. Number one, when it comes to health care generally, we ought to be reforming health care so that we make health insurance personal, portable, and affordable. We expand patient choice and we keep government from getting in between us and our doctors. Now that principle applies across the board, but it also applies in particular circumstances. For example, the VA. What has happened to the VA is shameful. We need real accountability in the VA, and in particular, we need reforms that allow our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines to be able to choose any doctor they wish. If they want to go to the VA, great, but if they want a cardiologist in private practice, we should empower our vets to have choices. And finally, on Medicare. We need to honor the commitments we made to our seniors, and in particular what we need in Washington is leadership to stand up and preserve and reform Medicare and Social Security so we can take care of our seniors and follow through on those commitments for generations to come. And I am campaigning on entitlement reform to strengthen those fundamental bulwarks for our society. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Um, I follow you, and I want to thank you for fighting on the Senate floor on many issues, including Obamacare. I am from Wisconsin. I'm one of the millions of Americans paying the common care fine, and you see my work hours go below 29. I have colleagues that have lost their homes over this, have had to move over state. I'm over here in Iowa looking for work. And tying that question into, and I believe you would find it if you became President of the United States, that you would appeal this. Tying this into that we need a two-thirds majority all the time to override what Obama likes to call his pen and phone. Tying this into the Iran deal, what are we going to do if we don't get the two-thirds majority vote? Because this is serious. We have hostages sitting yet in Iran. Look at what happened to our U.S. Marine last year sitting in Mexico. What are we going to do? What are we, how, what is the solution? And, and thank you for being a fighter. Well, man, thank you for that question. It's a very important question. You know, you're right that Barack Obama is fond of saying that he has a pen and he has a phone. Or if you live by the pen, you die by the pen. And I have said that if I'm elected president, the very first thing I intend to do is revoke every single unconstitutional and illegal executive action for Obama. Iran is an issue of extreme
extraordinary importance. This Iranian nuclear deal is catastrophic. I think the single greatest national security threat facing America is the threat of a nuclear Iran. Under this deal, Iran is allowed to keep all 19,000 centrifuges. It's allowed to keep spinning many of those centrifuges. It's allowed to keep much of its enriched uranium. It's allowed to keep developing its ICBM program, which exists for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to carry a nuclear warhead to the United States of America. You don't need an ICBM to reach Israel. You need an ICBM to get across the Atlantic and attack what they call the Great Satan, which is the United States of America. If this deal goes through, billions of dollars will flow into Iran, the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. Those billions of dollars will go to Hezbollah, to Hamas, to the Houthis. If this deal goes through, and Frank, this is not an exaggeration, the Obama administration will become literally the world's leading financier of radical Islamic terrorism. American dollars will fund jihadists seeking to murder Americans, Israelis, and Europeans. Then you're, you're blunt and you're candid. Yes. Why would the president do this? The reason he would do it, Ben Rhodes, the deputy national security advisor, said that an Iranian nuclear deal would be the Obamacare of the second term. I think he meant that as a comment. <laughs> the reason is simple. They view this purely as a domestic political legacy and agenda. You cannot fight and defeat radical Islamic terrorism when you have a president and an administration who refuses to utter the words radical Islamic terrorism. This deal that profoundly endangers Israel, profoundly endangers America, risks millions of lives, is interconnected with the terrorist act in Chattanooga, where four U.S. Marines and one sailor were burned. Now, President Obama inexplicably referred to that as a lone gunman. It wasn't a lone gunman any more than Nadal Hassan in Fort Hood was workplace violence. And that the next president in January 2017 be one who will stand up on the world stage and say unequivocally, under no circumstances, will Iran, led by a theocratic Ayatollah, please chance of death to America, under no circumstances will Iran be allowed to.